Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to continuing coverage of the APA World Pool Championships here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Jason Bowman. I'm joined by the lovely striking Viking, Ava Lawrence. Ava, for the fans of high-level play, they're going to get their fill today because we've got the finals of the Masters Championship. Absolutely. This is as good as it gets in amateur pool right here. There's no limit to this. You're not a pro. You are an amateur. And this is not the USAM, but this is the team version of that, essentially, where you have the cream of the crop going for 10000 today. Absolutely. There are no handicaps here. Jump cues are allowed. Push outs are allowed. Uh, Ava talked about the U.S. Amateur Championship format that we utilize here. Players are going to play a combination of eight ball and nine ball. Uh, we do allow any combination of men and women with a max of four players allowed on a roster. And then teams choose th up to three players for the match. Uh, as I mentioned, no skill level limit. We talked about the jump cues. Uh, there is no coaching allowed in this particular format, even though it is team format, mm -hmm. but with the players as highly rated as they are, no coaching allowed, and it is a race to seven games within each match. First team to win two points is your champion. We've got horseshoes and hand grenades. They are out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And Ava, we got the defending champions out of Charlotte, North Carolina, the Whiteout, back the white out. to defend their crown. They're the ones to beat. They played great last year, and there's no doubt that they're going to play great this year, especially starting out with Mr. Abernethy. Things are just about ready to go here in Pool Dog Championship Arena. Shout out to our friends at PoolDog.com. They are presenting sponsor of all of our coverage of the APA World Championships. Looks like we're going to have Jeff Abernathy of the Whiteout with the break. Looking over that rack. Again, he will have the break here momentarily. His opponent, Gerald Dunn, goes by Jerry. Getting no handicaps here, so we are racing to seven. They are starting in the eight ball set. We'll see five games of eight ball before they switch to the nine ball set where we can see up to eight games of nine ball. It's a lot of details. A lot of details coming up. You guys out. got all the deets? I hope you got all the deets because we are about to get underway. All right, that was an interesting break. He had some powers into it. Miss hit it a little bit and even though two balls went in, you'll see this mess right here. This is not going to be one of those quick ones, although the balls are fairly open. Nothing is really tied out, tied up, so if you're playing position, position here, position, position, that's not easy to say. You, cannot, you could actually run this rack, so it's going to take a look and survey the table before you get started here. This is where the game of straight pool comes in, if you have that as a background, which really helps your eight ball game with all the traffic, especially on a seven foot table, where it comes into play a lot more, since there's less surface to work with. Again, Jeff Abernathy at the table of the defending champions, the whiteout. Charlotte, North Carolina. Their opponents out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hope all you folks tuning in are having a great day. Thursday, <laughs> early afternoon here in Las Vegas. Championship number four of six to be decided here in Pool Dog Arena. We're going to see Jeff shooting the six here. Made two balls on the break the solids so he's going to be he's jacked up over this he's got some issues that the one ball that he might have some problems with well right now he didn't come out far enough so he doesn't really have a shot but that seven ball the fact that the 11 is right here would stop a run out so this is where a seasoned player will look for a defensive shot if they can here you don't want to make all yours if you can't go all the way you can't figure out a way to break them open then obviously go defense early rather than late you know skill level three four two you might you're going to want to get as many balls off as you can when you can but at this level the most deadly thing is that you knock everything off and leave one or two at the end so 
we knew as soon as that rack was struck that it was going to be kind of a cat and mouse game here. All right, so we'll get our first look at Jerry Dunn of the Horseshoe and Hand Grenades team. They've got some experience here in the Masters as well, Ava. They have been playing together. This particular iteration of Horseshoe and Hand Grenades have been playing for two years. They finished 17th last year. A couple of them were on the team three years ago that took third place. Mm -hmm. So lots of experience. They've also got on their roster Joe Hong, who won this event or was on a team that won this event back in, I believe, 2013. So right. lots of experience here in this Masters Championship final. A lot of experience. Well, Jerry started out with a really good shot there, and it's kind of opened up the stripes here pretty well. So now it's time to take that extra few minutes and just kind of plan out, get the trouble balls out of the way. Again, now nothing is tied up anymore. He's got an excellent opportunity to make something happen. He would have loved to be able to make that ball right there, but instead he does have the 12. I'm not sure the 14 ball goes in the side pocket, so. You see there's a bit of a cluster there, but nothing is touching, and everything has a pocket. It's just about picking them off, try to go into the balls as little as possible, because that's usually when you kind of mess things up. When you have an open table, you want to avoid that at all costs. $10,000 on the line here in the final of the Masters Championship. Runner-up will take home 5000 We had two third-place teams finish this morning here in Masters, each taking home 3000 I believe. Had a team out of Dallas to the moon and a team out of San Diego. Talk is cheap, so congratulations to both those teams. Outstanding run here in the Masters Championship where you will find many heavy hitters. Well, that just, <laughs> that kind of banked that one in, but it worked. And it looks like uh, 13, 10, 15 is the way I would play this. Just come out for the eight. So just roll this up a bit. We might play the 15 next. Yeah, he's gonna play 15, 10. Again, these matches are race to seven, combination of eight ball and nine ball. They have opted to start in the eight ball set. So you'll see them play five games of eight ball and up to eight games of nine ball, depending on how the score shakes out. But the first to seven. Look out, look out. Just enough to see it. I bumped that eight a little bit so he can now make it in the side or in the corner. Holy smokes, that went haywire real quick. He just wanted to smooth draw that out a little bit. And now he's put himself in a tough spot here. I think the only option he has to cut it in, the f I believe the five ball is stopping the bank, so he's going to have to make this severe cut into the side pocket. That's what it feels like sometimes, especially if you're a little bit nervous or not paying attention. It just kind of goes off in your hand and explodes. Way too much speed, but nice shot. He held it together. Nicely done for Gerald Dunn. Jerry Dunn takes a one nothing lead in this race to seven. As the players prepare for the next rack, want to give a... Mention to another Masters player who unfortunately is not here this year, our good friend Kenneth Brisbane, 2014 U.S. Amateur Champion and a name familiar to a lot of the players here in the Masters Championship. He is battling some very serious health issues. And one of the nicest guys, too, that you can meet. I mean, it's horrible. I'm Great guy. We are, okay. we are rooting for you, Kenny, and uh, I know a lot of folks here in Las Vegas rooting for him. In fact, Dave, I, yeah. I ran into Brian Parks last night. Most people know Brian. 
but his team had KB on their uh, team shirt. So, cool. you know, a lot of people thinking about Kenny yeah. out here. And so As we, wish we. Him, uh, we wish him the best, him and his family, and the, the struggles he's going through right now. So meanwhile, our referee is preparing the rack. You get a good look here at Pool Dog Arena. This is the home of all of our championship finales here in Las Vegas. Nice crowd that has filtered in on this Thursday afternoon. Most seats full. Of course, we added some seating after we the uh, eight ball event the other day. and There's still some seats available. So if you're here at the West Gate and you want to come down and check out the Masters action firsthand, come join us. And for all of you folks tuning in online, we really appreciate you watching. I have a feeling every seat's going to be full by the time it's over with. A lot of players may be finishing their matches from this morning and also that haven't realized what's happening in here yet. So, Still got nine ball teams playing down in the main yeah. room. You've got the team captain championship still underway. And, of course, mini mania room is full as always. Packed. Action continues. Packed out till the last Hour second. after hour until they kick everybody out to clean it up for... <laughs> the next day yeah. so referee still working on this rack if there are ever players that are particular about their racks Ava oh my guess they are the masters players yeah. so he is doing his due diligence And although this table only gets played on in the finals, there hasn't been that many matches on it to where the table should, you know, have a tough time racking. You know, sometimes when you hit the ball, the top ball in particular, and all of them over time will kind of make little tiny skid marks, little little indentation in the cloth just from the friction of the balls getting hit. But uh, the referee is just a little bit of an issue racking these just probably a ball or two falling off and like you said he knows they're going to come and check that rack out so absolutely want to make sure that it's that it's right our referees all volunteers APA members that volunteer to come out for a couple weeks and they do a great job. I mean, they're long hours that they're standing around on the floor and people getting all in the tizzy about this or that. Yeah, or it's a tough gig, no doubt about it. Tough gig, but... Yeah. Do appreciate all their hard work. Jerry Dunn now at the table, ready to break. That's a much better break there than last time. This table looks a lot prettier. Made a s stripe on the break. Open shot on the 10 ball. He's got the wrong angle. The cue ball was over a little bit more. I'd like to be able to come down this way. So he's got the opposite angle that he wants, but he's still going to be able to get a shot on the nine ball down there, with no problem. Nice little spin shot here should bring him out between the 11 and 14 to be able to get a shot on the 14. Into the rail and down. Even if it goes into the 11, he should be fine. Jerry and his oh teammates ouch. from Philadelphia, they play out of Gardenville Hotel. I like it. I know, that sounded kind of like an intriguing place. He's shaking his head here because the one thing he did not want, it's like the two bad things first dead straight in which is fine if you can draw it back for the other balls but he's also jacked up over the 14 ball so always a chance when you have to go into balls 
You never know quite where it's going to end up. Now he's going to have to take a much tougher shot. Cheated the pocket a little bit there. He can make this 14 in the corner, but the cue ball is going to fly. He's going to make sure that he really looks. This is the shot here, obviously, of this rack. Well, it's a thin cut, and he was really focused on trying to make contact there on the 12. And what a smorgasbord here for Jeff Abernathy. Not used to seeing Jeff without a hat on, I don't think. It's I know. You know, I didn't really really yeah, recognize a lot of him these right guys at first. I'm going, wait a minute. It is Jeff. A lot of these guys you see in hats quite often. But yeah. here in the finals, no hats. We want to <laughs> see your I beautiful think he mugs. Looks, I think he looks just splendid today. I'm a hat guy, too, so I get it. But they don't let me wear a hat either, so. No. And we're not even really on camera. <laughs> Two in the side for Jeff. Again, they're going to play five racks of eight ball. They're in their second rack, and then they will switch to the nine ball set. The way that works is they lag, and the winner of the lag has the choice between taking the break and the format. I think in most cases, they probably go ahead and take the break, but you never know. never know. Normally, everybody tends to start with eight ball because somebody can really run away with it in nine ball. All right, a chance this to is shoot some balls, get warmed up, yeah, right? Yeah, and nine balls, somebody <coughs> can just, you know, break, run, break, run, break, run. The table is breaking kindly, so you stay in the match a little more. Your chances of staying in a match, even at this level, are greater in eight balls. So most, most players will start with eight ball. All right, the key here is the four ball. The fact that it doesn't go past... 14 there in the corner so looks like he's drawing back I thought he was going to follow it a little bit there and just play the six ball in this in this corner and then the four ball in the same corner but he can always come down shoot this seven six four or he could go for the six now and just kind of slide it in with some reverse but the table slides a lot because this cloth is brand new. And so are the balls, even though it's had some play, it's still tricky. I don't know if he's going to like that. Oh, he came around just a little help from the 14 that ball there. Kind of picked up a little bit of spin. Came out perfectly. Again, Jeff and his teammates, the whiteout there from Charlotte, North Carolina. They are the defending champions in the Masters format. Their opponents out of Philadelphia. Nice stroke there. It looks like two racks. Neither player was able to do a break and run. And one little mistake early, and the other one comes in and takes over. Abernathy pockets that eight in the corner, ties this match up at one game apiece. He will have the break. I've always loved Jeff's tempo with the table. It's not rushed, but it's not taken forever. He's just kind of reminds me a little bit of Buddy Hall when Buddy was playing. Just kind of taking his time, moving around the table, surveying it, just not standing in one spot too long, which is a very common mistake that a lot of amateurs make. So that's something to pay attention to if you 
dream of becoming a better player and improving is just finding whatever tempo works for you. You don't have to run around the table, but... Buddy was always great to watch. My mother, she came over from Sweden once back in the early 80s, and she just got this crush on Buddy. She thought he was the <laughs> coolest dude. <laughs> it's like a big teddy bear. Yeah. Forty-one vendors here at this year's World Pool Championships. Lining the halls and tournament rooms. Mm -hmm. Forty-nine states at this year's World Championships. Three countries, our friends from Japan even made it back this year. Excited to have our JPA friends back in competition. 328 tables utilized here. Nearly 14,000 participants. And nearly 14,000 spouses and <laughs> friends and <laughs> mini mania players. <laughs> and it is packed. And after the whole, you know, COVID situation that we had, it's just fun to see all these masses of people again and having a good time and not worrying about things. So, so much anyway. Abernathy will have the break here. Looking to take his first lead of the match. Have yet to see a break and run in this match. Third rack of the eight ball set. Mm, nothing. Dry, Dry break. Dry break there, yeah. Not quite what you hope for, needless to say, but it's not an easy rack by any means. The last one opened up a lot more here. You got the three balls on the rail. Six and 12 are tied up. So this is going to be a little bit more work here to run this table. You see the three ball right here. Here's the other issue. So he's going to go ahead and take the take the stripes here. He's got a couple of balls on the other side of the table that he can use to break up the 6 and 12. Oh, he corner. let it go. This table is fast. He let it go. This was the ultimate position here where you can make the nine and just bump those open, but he just not used to the speed of the table yet. Like we said, brand new cloth in here, much less used than in the main tournament room. The lights dry everything up. It's going to slide more, play faster. So it'll take a little while, but not very long for these guys to get adjust to the speed of the table. And this is Jerry Dunn at the table, member of the Horseshoe and Hand Grenades team out of Philadelphia. All right, perfect breakout ball here. Just really pick it, you know, pick your spot where you want to hit it. He's going to have to figure out make sure that he gets a shot afterwards 
you want to hit the center, the left or right side. When it's cl this close to those balls, you can figure out where you want to hit it to be able to get position for the next. Be great if he could just go into the six, but I don't think he's got the angle. That'll work. Nice speed too, not to get the twelve in trouble. And we'll see how he's gonna venture here to get position on this ball, considering the fact that the eight's blocking the other one. He might be able to just draw it straight back, come back out here. Just that's one thing that you work on is playing center table position. Wherever you are, he's going to play high high right instead of drawing it. It's got a little more angle than he would like. And that should work. Notice here the players calling their pocket. They don't have to mark the pocket in the Masters format. Yeah, a few other changes too with the Masters is their jump cues are allowed and uh, push out and nine ball. And that, Jer Jerry takes back the lead. 2-1, still yet to see a break and run in this match. Jerry will have the break. Get a nice look here at Pool Dog Championship Arena. Been a great few days in here, Ava. Last night we crowned our ladies champions. The Cleveland ladies. The Cleveland ladies. I'll let you guess where they were from. <laughs> the Canadian team. Cleveland and Canada. Canada going at it there. I shouldn't just say generally Canada. That's kind of rude. But it was Toronto there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, right. Barry, Ontario. Two days ago, we had our eight ball world champions crown, the team of triple threat. And then the fun eight ball where it was the guys against the girls. Yeah. Triple threat beat an all ladies team out of the Chicago area. The regulators. The regulators. That was an exciting match. Well, they've all been real good matches. That they have. All right. Rack is prepared. Jerry Dunn with his second break of the match. All right, made a couple of stripes there, so this is looking pretty good. This could be our first break and run here, I believe. Did he break and run the last one? No. No, he didn't. No break no. and runs yet. In fact, it's been the out. It's whoever has broken the first three right, racks has right. not won the the game. So you don't expect there, you know, unless it's a real safety game and a mess. It's usually one or two, maybe three innings in one of these matches. So this is great. He's got the nine ball right there. He can come around. Could come all the way up for the 15 now because he's got, he doesn't have any much traffic to deal with. And nice to get that ball on the other side of the table away right now. He's coming down. Just doesn't want to get straight in. Little, oh, he did get straight in. Look at that. We'll see what he's going to do. If he's going to go rail first to create an angle or draw it straight back with some spin. He might be able to punch, punch it a little bit off the rail. Yeah. Perfect position for the 12. Well, it doesn't go, so he's going to go 10 ball instead. I would definitely take the 12 if it goes. 
10 ball, you're going to go into traffic. All right, more controllable shot here on the 12 ball. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Again, like we said, until you're used to it, yeah, that's... Surprised it didn't hit that with a little bit of low. When you hit the bo cue ball with low, almost it looks like you're going to draw it, but you just kind of kill the cue ball a little bit. can hit the cue ball with a little more speed, but when it hit the ball, hits the ball you're shooting at, it'll slow down. And he kind of rolled it up instead, and this table is fast. Kevin Adams asks, do you think the changes to the Masters will ever be implemented to regular league? I'm not sure what he means by changes. I'm, I'm assuming no. he means the different rules, like Ouch. the push out and oh wow, the jump cues. But yeah, the answer would be happen. would be no, because we believe those things tend to favor the higher rated player. So if you're looking for those elements in a format, Masters is the way to go. That are our yeah U.S. Amateur Championship tournaments might be a good fit for you, but no changes to league play upcoming. At least not that they've told Ava and I about. No. We would we would know, right? They would tell us. <laughs> we, would, we would probably okay. be the first to know. Okay. And we would say no. I mean, that's not going to happen because it is part of the equalizer and everything else too. And the fact that it's winter breaks should be enough of a break for the better, you know, um, better players. They can control the table in a different way. But yeah, no, that's not going to happen. All right. Open, sweet looking table about 20 different ways of playing this rack considering that nothing's tied up and only this one ball is on the rail really there's nothing on the other side of the table not sure what he did there holy smokes he just made a super easy table tough he drew it way too far instead of just stopping there for the sixth and playing the two he came up and then now he's got either a combo here or he's got a combo here. I'm a little surprised that he did that. Trying to get cute there, Jeff. Let's see if he can make this combination or unless he's cutting the four. Nope. Missed the combination in the side. That's a big deal right there. Good opportunity now for Jerry Dunn. To extend his lead. That could should have been a coulda should have been. <laughs> A two all instead. Great opportunity here to get up three to one. Arlen, the Masters is a non handicap format, so we don't use skill levels here. It's straight up race to seven. Three people compete in a match. First team to win two matches is your winner. And we mentioned some of the other rules that are a little different than APA league play, like jump cues being allowed and the push out and nine ball no coaching so that would be your masters format combination eight ball and nine ball Jerry Dunn fires that eight ball in the mm -hmm. corner takes a 3-1 lead this will be our final game of the eight ball setup coming here. David, that was the first game where we've seen the, the breaker actually win the point. Yeah. Well, unforced error there by, by Jeff. Got about the only place on the table where there was no, sh no shot or no easier shot anyway. So he kind of got out of line. And until you get used to the table, I know this from playing on the Pro Tour as well, especially when you're playing the, the TV matches, you've got to play as simple pool as you can and be, you know, keep that in the back of your mind until you're used to the table, how fast it rolls. Kind of with that Bambi on ice thing, you've got to make sure that, not think about, you know, if I get out of line, it's more of a what's, you know, kind of keep it, like I said, keep it in the back of your mind when you're playing position. It's one little move like that, and all of a sudden, instead of 2-2, two, two, we're looking at the defending champions wide out being down 1-3. to three. Another good look at Pool Dog Arena here. 
Still some seats available. If you're here at the Westgate, come down, take in this fantastic finale in person. You can still pull it up on your phone, too. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can sit in the arena. I, I, a lot of times I'll see people You'll see that, yeah. sitting in the arena watching it on their phones. All right, that was a pretty break. Made a stripe on the break. Everything opened up nicely. It's got a shot at the three or the one. The referee does rack for all of our championship events here in Pool Dog Arena. It's like everything else that you guys managed to set this up pretty much as a pro event. But oh boy, too solid. Shot at the 14 though. He should be okay here with the 14 ball in the side. But, you know, same thing We in the pro tournaments or in Moscone Cup or WPBA, whatever it is, we, you always have the uh, referee breaking when you have the opportunity to, I mean, uh, racking when you have the opportunity to have them there. It would be great if we could do it for all the matches, but with 328 tables, you need a... Yeah. You need a, a bi an even bigger army of referees than what we, <laughs> we have available, so... Yeah, there's no, no timeouts... Yeah, no These coaching. guys are on their own. I think they can... Now we should say if they need to take a bathroom break or something, well, that is yeah. allowed, but there's no right. you know, talking to your teammates about what to do next kind of thing. Any breaks would be in between racks. Just straight across here for the 11. That's nice. I and talked to Horseshoe and Hand Grenades before the match. They were very aware that they were playing the defending champions. Mm -hmm, I'm sure. Felt they were very up to the task of knocking off the defending champions. They were not shying away from that challenge. As you might expect from well, a Masters Jerry's team. Well, Jerry's proven that so far in this yeah. match anyway. I mean, he's taken advantage of Jerry's mistakes and also played some some really good pool here. See if you can get through. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. That was beautiful, right between the seven and the one. Just enough speed not to get through or Wait a minute, can he not make the 15? He must not be able to make the 15 ball by, by the 6. He's going to play it in the side. Oh, you know what? After all this worrying about speed and trying to really play, so <coughs> I think he might have snookered himself. Easy jump if he did. It's close. Ava, you'll be happy to know our Voices are soothing a youngster to sleep as we <laughs> speak, so I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not, but we're going to take yeah. it as one. We're glasses half full kind of people. Yeah. Hopefully that baby gets to sleep sooner than later. We've both been there. Jeff Abernathy back at the table now. Jerry kind of returning the favor there. He had a chance, good chance to run out. We'll see if... This is looking a lot better, though. This is just as well <coughs> as last time for Jeff. See if he can get out this time. This is the final game of the eight ball set. Jeff pockets the one in the corner. I believe this is our last eight ball rack, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. We're going to nine ball after this. So this is a big deal. This is always a big rack to win because you get to have the first break in nine ball. And as we know, especially on a seven foot table, these guys 
can put quite a few racks together in nine ball and have done so many, many times. All of a sudden, you can be up four to three or three to, you know, you can be up good in, in the eight ball but as soon as somebody gets that first nine ball break. So this was a big, big rack for Jeff to win. We've moved relatively quickly through the eight ball set too. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, big part of that's been the layout of the after the break, but and a little bit not a lot of safety you know, a play part early about on. How well they played too, Jason. Yeah. I have to point out <laughs> that might have something to do that's with true. it too. Not many missed shots. I don't know that we've seen any missed shots. Maybe some missed position. Yeah, it's like I said, yeah. Made, but yeah, you're not going to see too many missed shots. But like you said, again, until they get used to the speed of the table. And the, the other players on the team, too, by sitting here and watching it, are going to get used to the speed just by watching the match. So that's going to help the second and third player on each team. Four in the corner. All right. Jeff trying to put this eight ball away. Give him the break in the nine ball set, which will be upcoming. Fires that eight ball down well in the done. corner pocket. No problem there for Jeff Abernathy. Now with two points, so they will split the eight ball set three to two in favor of Gerald Dunn. And we will transition into the nine ball format here at the Masters Championship. If you're just joining us, $10,000 on the line here in Pool Dog Arena. Masters Championship, first match. All right, it sounds like the players are going to take a quick break. While we do that, we're going to hear a quick word from our friends at pooldog.com Each year, thousands of people from all walks of life head to Las Vegas, chasing the What a match. What a match. What a combat. <laughs> what begins as a hobby on a pool table in their local bar or pool room evolves through hard work, dedication, and even luck. There it goes again. Oh, my God. Wow. Into something bigger, something greater than anything they could have ever imagined. I've got a 14-year-old boy at home that we play a lot in my garage, and because of that, he got to see me win this thing, and that's huge for me and him. Few ever envisioned playing on a stage of this magnitude, but once they step forth into a sea of pool tables, as far as the eye 317 see, tables at this year's event. We like to call it pool playing heaven. The dream has been realized. And the competition begins. For nearly 10 days, they live this dream. And for a select few who manage to persevere, 
they return home champions. Part competition, part experience of a lifetime. The APA World Pool Championships has it all and more. So take a moment to let yourself dream. You never know where it might take you. And we are back here at Pool Dog Arena. Jeff Abernathy will have the break as we've moved into the nine ball set. Jeff trails by one game in this race to seven. Solid break, and there goes the four. And check out the, this is what we were talking about. This could go real fast. Getting that first break, that last mat game in eight ball, and the first break in nine ball. It's got a perfect layout here. Just a just to shoot a stop shot here, pretty much on the one ball. I'll give him a good angle. He'd love to slam it to get off the rail a little bit, so he can maneuver the cue ball to get down to the three. But beautiful shot I hear after the break. No, I don't think you want to go that much. Holy smokes. Phil P. V. Vaughn, glad you could be here, wherever you are in the arena. He's one of my favorite uh, supporters of APA yeah, on social media. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's one of the good ones out there. I think he's it's a, like the John a Wayne of Keyboard he's Cowboys. Just loves it. Yeah. yeah, he's the John Wayne yeah. of the Keyboard Cowboys. <laughs> All right, so easy def defensive shot here, obviously. Just sne sneak up behind this eight. He doesn't want that to go in. Well, it's going anyway. Yeah, it went in anyway. <coughs> it's that old. Uh, you controlling the cue ball and then all of a sudden forgot about the object ball. Yuck. 10,000 dollars on the line in this match. Boy, I don't even know here. This is there's no good defensive shot here really. And trying to slice this in from where he's at, the angle and the distance. Let's see We'll see what he comes up with here. Well, it's a good shot, good try. That was a tough battle. That was big mistake there on the one to the two. An open table, everything was laying pretty sweet. And then that defensive shot, the safety, when he made the two, that's going to hurt. I can't imagine. Jeff not punishing him here in this rack and taking the first nine ball game that they're playing. Ooh. Well, color me surprised. Hmm. Didn't quite turn out right, did it? I'm not even sure you can see the edge of it. No, oh, it's going to have to kick. Oh, wow. Misses the five, goes straight into the corner pocket, the ball second, in hand that's now. That's the second for kick shot he's missed. Jeff Abernathy. Chance to run this rack out. Tie this match at three games apiece. Again, this is a race to seven. We are in the first game of the nine ball set. Oh, 
What a treat for Jeff Abernathy and for Whiteout to get back to the table there after the mistake that he made. You got to remember, I mean, these guys are not only are they not machines, but they're not professional players, even though as good as they are, they're going to make mistakes. And and it's funny because a lot of players on your regular APA team thinks that if you have a 7-9 on your team, that they're, they are going to be machines. They're like, we, we've got to win. We've got a 7-9 <laughs> on our yeah. team. We've got to win. Well, not only are there other good players out there, but they're going to make mistakes too. Pros miss balls, get out of line. And definitely uh, in amateurs, including masters, that's obviously going to happen. Abernathy oh my, oh my God. narrowly <laughs> misses a scratch in the side wow. after pocketing the nine in the corner, but cue ball stays on the table, and Mr. Abernathy takes a... I should say they are now tied at three games apiece. He will maintain the break. Still looking for his first lead of the match. Nice panoramic shot there of Pool Dog Arena. Good crowd that's come in here this Thursday afternoon. Nearly $1.3 million will have been paid out by the time we leave Las Vegas, Ava. And like you always stress, in cash. Cash. It's here somewhere. Who's got that <laughs> cash? Who's keeping that in their suitcase in their room? And the, the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Going to need a bigger safe brought in. All right. All tied up now. See if Jeff can take advantage and get a... Break and run here. One and cue ball. He's got nice control of that. Of them, you saw that in the last break too. One and the one and the cue ball stayed together. Got a great opportunity for a defensive shot here. Just play safe and sneak up and freeze behind that eight ball. All right, we'll see. He's 0 for 2 here, Jeff is. I mean, not Jerry. Kicking. So we'll see if he, can, he needs to make contact of this one or he's going to see this rack slip away as well. Oh, did it again. So he goes into the two ball, driving it down to the top rail, scratches in the side. Ball in hand again for Jeff. That's a little surprising, and I, I don't know that it's, he hasn't been consistent. It's been long or short, but that's, uh, that's a must here, getting ball in hand, player of Jeff's quality. Usually doesn't turn out too well. No. Jeff rolls that cue ball into position on the one. I got in a good spot here. We're making this combo. Can just float the cue ball down. The two is going to go into the rail a little bit on the side rail and come back out. So you just got to make sure you hit it firm enough to bring the cue ball back out without too hard. Takes there you the go, perfect. Two, three combo. Looks like Jeff is getting a little bit more used to the speed here. You know, when you're playing on these this new cloth, it's it's funny because you really want to just let your stroke out a little bit more, but you still need to follow through and stroke it, but control in a much more controlled way when you're playing on one of these 
newer cloths under the lights does change things for sure. We miss you too, Kyle Weber. just want to pretty much stop there. Could stop where he was and just played six ball and follow down to the bottom and back out again, but he's chosen to just draw it straight back. Any way you get there, as long as... Even if he ends up straight here, he should be okay, the nine ball being where it is. It's not where you want to be, but he's got plenty of space here to cheat the pocket a little bit, create an angle and get out for the nine. Sorry, but I'm going to have to do this too. Greg Dix, hi buddy. You I missed too. Nice shot there. And the one thing Jeff has been able to do is he's starting to really find his speed, but he's also taken advantage of Jerry's mistakes. Now with his first lead of the match, four to three, three games away from victory for mm -hmm. Jeff Abernathy. Jerry Dunn still needing four games. Again, this is a race to seven. Best two out of three in terms of match points. First team to get two match wins will be your champion. Still in the first match here of the Masters Championship. We're in Pool Dog Arena here in Las Vegas. Someone asked earlier who is on each team on horseshoes and gra hand grenades. We got Sean O'Neill, Jerry Dunn, who is playing in this match, Joe Hong, and Derek Benavides. Nice. Pretty good. Well I, done. I think I pulled it off. Well, let's say I did that anyway. And then White Out. The opposing team. We've got. I'm going to wait for them to catch up here, but we've got Joey Fox, Brian White, Jeff Abernathy, who is in this match right here, and then Josh Heater. All right. Jeff has the break once again. Well, it's looking, well, that five ball right here, that's the only thing we're looking at to see what he's going to use to break it open. He's got a great opportunity to do it with the four. Got the six on the break there. I think just getting position with an angle on the four where he can go one or two rails around and break them up. You don't want to leave it to where that's your la the next shot, but in this case, with the table being open, no other balls there to threaten to get him snookered, I don't think that that's a problem. He wants to get as straight as possible on this two in the side. That didn't quite get there, but better than being snookered behind the eight. In case you just joined us, Jeff has had a little bit of an issue with the speed of the table, snookered himself a couple of times. That'll work. Well, he's got the angle he wants, but now he's jacked up a little bit over the eight. Wanted to come out a little bit more than that. See if he can put some bottom right on this to spin it deep to break up the nine and the five. Perfect. That was pretty. I think Mr. Abernathy has found his 
game. He's gotten used to the speed of the table a little bit. His rhythm, rhythm looks good. You can tell he's getting more precise with his position play than he was in the first couple of racks. Pockets that nine right. in the corner, or I'm sorry, in the side pocket. Takes a 5-3 <laughs> lead now. Maintains the break. Things have definitely turned in Mr. Abernathy's favor here these last few racks. No question, and each match is a race to seven, so it's far from over yet, but big break there for Jeffrey. After Jerry made a couple of little mistakes. They both did, like we said, no balls really. Maybe one ball's been missed so far, maybe. But there's been some position mistakes. That's been the biggest difference in this match so far. See Jerry Dunn waiting for an opportunity to get back to the table. Hoping when he gets there he's not hooked ridiculously bad. Referee preparing the rack here. And if you're a pool fan, and you know, that's what's so great about this division too, if you're a pool fan at all, which pretty much everybody here I would think are, that come, they're out here in Las Vegas, but to watch the Masters players play, you know, just to learn. I know a lot of people say all the time they watch uh, our matches on, on, that have been on ESPN or that are on YouTube or stream just to learn and see different patterns and everything else and well here's the opportunity jerry's been waiting for yeah shot on the one ball the one time the one didn't join the cue ball down on this side of the table all the way down so he's got a tester here to start out with he should be able to get a if he does cut the one ball down here he should be able to get some kind of a shot at the two it looks like the cue ball would be heading down here towards the eight I just really need to keep keep your head down here. It's that backwards cut where you can't really sense where the pocket is, and he overcut mm. it. Watch out! Yeah, oh. that looks like another great opportunity for Abernathy. <coughs> Jeff surveying the table here. Strategizing, charting a path. Just a soft little tap here making this watch out. He's gonna get behind the four ball. Mm. This is the problem that he's had all along is just kind of rolling it up a little bit too much and a shot like that on the one you want to be able to really stroke it but table's fast a chance for jerry to possibly get back into this unless he kicks this in or kicks safe is that going to come out far enough for a shot not the shot you want that's for sure so I think he's going to probably have to shoot safe here. That's an awfully thin cut. There's a lot of blockers down here. The five, the three, the six. If he splits the balls up. Oh, he hit the four ball. He needed to go around that and come down on the other side of the table and another break for Team Whiteout.
tricky way to get on this three ball here, obviously. A three five combo is available, but you want to get pretty much perfect on that. And where he is with the two ball, that's going to be tough because you can't really go towards the left and back up the way you want to because the nine is right there. You can go right into it. So he may have to t try to hit this and slide off the nine. But I don't think he hit it not far enough, firm enough this time. All right, not, not this rack not getting any easier here, Jason. What would you do, Jason Bowman? I would uh, have signed up for the other division. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my strategy. <laughs> I would stick with uh, the handicap league play. Okay, I figured. Uh, it's going to hit the nine. Yeah, not too, too bad of a result there. Another chance for Jerry Dunn, who was really in control early on in this match, Ava. He was, yeah. Had a great chance to go ahead 4-1, to one, wasn't it? Didn't he have a chance to go ahead 4-1, to one, I think? I four believe to two, so. at least. Just missed that position. and Not a lot of margin for error in the nope, Masters events. Not at all. Little mistakes become several points for your opponent. And for Jerry, the mistakes, I mean, if, and then you let somebody like Jeff Abernathy in after that, that's going to usually sting pretty good. Take a nice touch here on this combination. That's perfect. Somebody asked about it being a certain skill level to play in the Masters. You know what? Every local league is different. Obviously, a smaller league, it's going to be harder to find your seven nines playing the top, you know, level with Masters. So some let some of the lower players play. That's kind of local. You can check with your local league operator if there's a if there's a minimum to be able to play. I know some of the some of the sometimes some of these guys they get all these great players together. And there might be a five, but they'll get all these great and they never play. They just they're the they're the <laughs> captain handling the paperwork and everything else just to be able to go out to Vegas with. Yeah. So you know once you're the captain, you're the boss, you can put it all together. Maybe that should be my strategy. Just I'll go get with like three <laughs> of these guys. That's what I'm saying. I'll make sure they show up <laughs> Don't think that on doesn't time, happen. which oh, yeah. is probably not an easy challenge, <laughs> but that'll be my contribution. And then. Don't think that doesn't happen. Six in the side. All right, the wrong angle here on the eight, but this shouldn't be a problem for Jeff. Ooh. Oh, well, that was just my fault right there, that whole mm, commentator mm, curse. Mm. That's going to be a costly miss, I believe. I think that's the first actual shot that Jeff's missed, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of position errors, but not missing too many balls, especially not makeable ones, like that ones that you should make kind of thing in the book. Anyway, Jerry pockets the eight in the corner. Drag that nine with him a little bit, but making this in the side or the corner for that matter. But he'd probably make this in the side. That shouldn't be a. Well, I, I'm not saying it. I'm not <laughs> saying it. <laughs> I didn't say it. Nine in the side there. So Ava, just as it looks like Jeff Abernathy would move to the hill, mm -hmm. misses that shot on the eight ball. Jared Dunn comes back, picks up his fourth point, pulls within one. Huge. And he's got the break. So, I mean, every rack is huge. Mistakes, Obviously, yeah. it's a big deal. But this particular one, mm, mm, mm. putting Jeff Abernathy on the hill, six to three versus five four. I mean, this is that was just what Team Horse Horseshoes and Hand Grenades needed. And Jeff is uh, back at breaking again. So we'll see now if he can put something together here.
Steve Sutton, no, I'm not, I'm more or less retired. I'm not saying forever, but um, some back, issue, back issues stopped me from practicing the way I need to, to be able to play the way I used to. So that's been going on for a while. And I finally said, okay, I can't, uh, I'm not enjoying this anymore. So I'm having a ton of time, um, fun being a league operator. I'm down in Coastal Carolina, APA, and uh, I have a blast with my crazy people down there. Do they ever try to get you to play down there? Do they ever try to say, I want to play Yeah, you but usually I'm, you know, I'm a kind of a worker bee. And I, you know, between me and Nikki and Toby, my daughter and son-in-law, you know, we're, we're working. You know, we want to put on as close to a professional event as we can and do as good of a job as we running it and everything else. So, no. They, but they do ask, but if I, I start playing one, then I'm playing, yeah. and then... They want that I beat the league operator patch from me, yeah. I bet. I, I can see that. They can get that from Toby. That's a <laughs> lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> so we made, on the break, what, the five? Five balls gone. Shot on the one here. Yeah, it wants to kill the cue ball here a little bit. A little bit of low left would slow it down enough where he can come around for the two that looks nice perfect position just held it up just right and this is obviously just cue ball control now speed see this is about the last frontier here the last thing he's got to deal with is getting the correct angle on the three to get it back up for the four so he can get on the other side for the six and that's too far that's too far all oh, right this is where you take the long tougher shot and you just kind of make this you can just draw this off the eight a little bit and then come around this way for the six That was a very sloppy drawing there. Oh, he may just go straight up and down. Got a little more angle than he wanted to, I think. Four in the corner there. One set to slow down so he's not jacked up over it. That was, phew, just in time. And Jerry is coming alive. Six in the corner. Oh boy. There's that speed control again. Holy smokes. Well, I hate these shots. You know, it's this close. You can't really, you got to trust it. Obviously, you always want to aim when you're standing up. That's where the aiming happens. And then you go down and trust it when you're down. But when their balls are like this and you, <laughs> you get down to shoot it, you, it doesn't feel right so tough when they're this close together but if he makes this he's got a chance to come around you know draw it a little bit some right come around two rails for the eight the eight does pass in the same pocket past the nine so oh it's gonna play defense or is he going for the nine here oh, he's playing safe i, I think, think he's still nine. pondering yeah, i don't think he can make the nine Okay, he wants that to slow down. Said that a few times. Again, table's playing fast. It looks like he can make the seven. Definitely can hit it for sure.
All right. This is Jeff Abernathy at the table, member of the Whiteouts, the defending Masters champions. All right, looks like he's going to get a good safe out of this. Nice shot. Nice shot, Jeff. Crowd here at Pool Dog Arena approves Mr. Abernathy's defense. We'll see how Jerry responds here. He's going to try to make it here, go between the eight and nine. Had a hard time with the kicking in this match. That was no was an easy hit, but not an automatic make by any means. We'll see here if Jeff can take advantage of that safety he played. I would think he's just stopping it there, yeah. You don't want to be flirting with trying to get on the other side, obviously, so just a nice smooth stop shot. Make the eight in the corner and the nine in the side. Seven ball in the corner. Ball goes down to just the nine here and a chance to once again be on the hill. I don't think he's going to mess this one up, Jason. I think he's going <laughs> to sitting there just needing one and having the break. So that's going to be uh, interesting now. He's been really good at controlling the cue ball and the one, getting them both to come up here on the far side of the table. We'll see if he can pull that off again. I'll make sure make we give a ball. Shout out to our sponsors, Action Cues, Aramith Billiard Balls, and our good friends at PoolDog.com, one of the many vendors here in Las Vegas. They are our presenting sponsor, helping us bring you all this great coverage of the APA World Championships. Jeff Abernathy now one rack away from securing... One of two points needed for his team to defend their Masters Championship. See if he can get it done here. He will have the break. Appreciate all you folks tuning in. Hope you're having a great Thursday wherever you are across the globe. And we've had some people tuning in from across the globe. Oh, yes. I think yesterday we had somebody from Cape Town, South Africa tuning in if I was following the comments correctly my mother my mother was watching from sweden and so there you go and a few friends of mine over there too so we had yeah people from a lot of different places we'll still have two championships to be decided after today we've got our team captain championship tomorrow night 5 p.m pacific and we'll cap off another great tournament with the nine ball world championships on saturday 2 p.m pacific time Jeff Abernathy ready to break here. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm, I've been calling shots all along, but once you do a commentator's curse when it's a little too <laughs> simple, and when it's just a stop shot, then I'm not going to try to get involved too much. But Pockets the one on the break. Pretty decent shot on the two as well. What do you think, Ava? This is looking awfully pretty. Two ball. Three, four are pretty self-explanatory. The key is is this ball right here, the five ball, obviously. Because he's going to have to get an angle on the five. Cut it, slice it in, go across the table and back out. So that's the only thing that I can see really go haywire here. But he's got the great opportunity to take this first point for Team White out.
All right, now it's a speed. He wants to get pretty much the exact angle where he's at right now. Just love to get a little bit closer. Enough to where he can doesn't have to slam it too much. But going uh, across the table and back again smoothly. Somebody tuning in from Greece. I like that. That's very cool. I'd like to get to over some, find me some Greece in my life. <laughs> Santorini, maybe? Right, we'll see if he's going to go across her back or try to kill it right here. I don't know if that he can hold it. Yeah, he could. Oh, no problem. No problem whatsoever. And I'm not going to say it, but... <laughs> There's times to just sit down and watch the beauty of it all, isn't there? Seven in the corner. Soon to be followed by the eight in the side. And all that remains is the nine ball. No problem there for Jeff Abernathy. He takes this first match 7-4, picks up an important point for his team, the Whiteouts. They need just one more point to secure their second consecutive Masters Championship. While we've got a couple of minutes as we get reset and figure out who the teams are going to put up next, we're going to hear a quick word from our friends at PoolDog.com. come from all walks of life. Different backgrounds. Different abilities. We all have different reasons for doing what we do, but we're all one. One love. One passion. One big family. We are. We are. Our American pool players. And American pool players. American pool players. And this is our league. The sport of pool has a lot of history, and traditionally the equipment has remained consistent over much of that history. But more recently, the sport has seen some modifications to one of its most visible pieces of playing equipment, the object balls. So we decided to dive into this evolution to better understand the driving force behind these changes and to examine how it's impacted players and fans alike. My search for answers started with our good friends at Aramith the world's premier billiard ball manufacturer. Their pool balls are used by players around the globe 
at some of the biggest and best tournaments the sport has to offer. According to Aramith, the object balls have traditionally displayed the following color code. While this color scheme provides the best contrast between balls, that was not necessarily the case for video and television production, as dark blue, dark purple, and maroon can all be difficult to distinguish, especially under challenging lighting conditions. As more and more professional pool tournaments started appearing on TV, a change was needed. So Aramith created the Super Aramith Pro TV set, which features a pink four and 12 ball instead of the traditional dark purple. The seven and 15 balls were also modified to feature a light brown color instead of maroon. The change drastically improved the contrast for television viewers, according to Aramith. But the color evolution did not stop there. More recently, at the request of Matchroom Sport, producers of the Moscone Cup and several other professional pool tournaments, Aramith went back to the drawing board to help meet the need of viewers on mobile devices to better differentiate ball colors on smaller screens. With that, the Aramith Tournament Black Set was born. Aramith developed a light purple five ball to replace the traditional orange five ball and used a light purple stripe on the 13 ball rather than the normal orange stripe. A lighter green ball replaced the darker green on both the six and 14. Most notable with the Aramith Tournament Black though was that all the stripe balls featured black instead of the traditional white or ivory that appears. This was designed for the nine ball game to better distinguish the nine ball with the one ball which of course both feature the color yellow. Some have even referred to the nine ball's new black and yellow color scheme affectionately as the bumblebee. To get a professional... All right, we are back here at Pool Dog Arena. Second match of our Masters Championship. Have at the table breaking David Benavides of Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. His opponent on whiteout is Josh Heater. David and his horseshoe and hand grenades teammates trailing by a point. Must have this next match to get to a third. If not, the whiteouts will be your champions for the second consecutive year. Once again, we're starting in the eight ball set. This is a combination eight ball and nine ball. Five games of eight ball before they move to the nine ball set. Race to seven. And this layout couldn't have ended up much better here after making a s the stripes that the 15 ball and can get that nine out of there right away. That's looking uh, pretty nice. Got two balls down at that end, two in the center, two down far near the eight ball. This is an important getting an angle on this nine. You might want to go down and into. No, no. Whoa. Got a little scary there, but he got his angle to get out. Play the 14 in the side. I think he's got enough angle. Put a little left on this and go around two rails. Not sure he can draw it out, be being where the three ball is. That'll work. You love to take the balls in sections, but with the angle he has now, he may decide to come down for the 11 and 13 and then go back up table again. We'll see what he's going to do. Yeah. Nice shot there. Got a little straighter than he wanted, but cheat the pocket a little bit and play it in this part. He should be able to come out a little bit here for the 13.
It looks like he has kind of figured out the speed a little bit more than, than it's like we t I was talking about before. When you sit and you watch, like I always, before in one of my matches, I would sit up in the bleacher somewhere kind of by myself and just watch the other players because you normally have little or no time warming up on the table that you're going to be playing on. So it really helps to kind of sit and watch the speed of the table. So when you step up, we saw both Jeff and Jerry in the last match really struggle with the speed of the table. This being new cloth, not very much used since we're only using this for the championship matches. The balls are not as, mu you know, they're much newer. Still have their original, sh original shine on them, so. <laughs> Um, but it seems like he's gotten the idea of the speed of the table here. Chance for Mr. Benavides to take an early lead in this match. And there's the first game. First blood goes to... Horseshoes and hand grenades. Obviously knowing they're in a must-win position and they put that pressure on Derek. It's a race to two and being down one nothing after the first rack in case you missed that. It's a winner break format, so that's going to get Derek up and break and try to extend his lead here. And a nice break starting out. We'll see what's going to happen here if the balls open up as nicely as they did. Let go of that cue ball. Two stopped it just in time, but yuck. <laughs> <laughs> One word to describe that layout. Yuck. Josh steps up and he's going, okay, Yikes. real nice. About every ball there in that quarter of the table. Yeah, I get comfortable here, people, because I think this rack's going to take a little bit. It's the one thing about eight ball. When the balls are wide open, it's a pretty simple game. But when they're like this, it is tough. And it usually results in whoever obviously got to play some good defense or offense to get around. But it's also about who's the most patient player. Like you're going, okay, I got to choose one of these. <laughs> this is my I first shot here. I don't want either one of them. You kind of got north against the south here. Horseshoes and hand grenades are from Pennsylvania and right out from North Carolina. No shot clock here in the finals. No sudden death in the finals. And I let them play it out. And rarely do we need, you know, have an issue with that in the Masters. But when this is the situation, this you just got to try to figure out what the lesser of two evils are here and choose. I don't know. I guess it's tricky because there's no real good shot either. I think I would prefer the solids well no yeah it's 50 50 i don't know and not a lot of easily makeable balls here either on top of that to choose something Looks like he's made his choice here with the high balls. No, he's going to just play defense. 
When in doubt. Defense it out. Yeah. Boom. Because you go ahead and pick one. <laughs> See how you Mr. Benavides wants to respond now? I think Josh said, listen, you broke those balls. You made this mess. You can yeah, go ahead you and clean pick. it up. Yeah. Don't clean it up too good, though. Mm. Just a little bit. Yeah. At least pick something. I don't know what to pick here. Well, look at this. All of a sudden, four ball here. Come in, break out the seven, and guess what? The table will be open up in two seconds here. Great opportunity to kind of fix things. He's looking, looking at, at the that. angle there, yeah. And that's just going to make sure, obviously, you get a shot after the word afterwards, but with the two ball being... Where it is, odds are pretty good that you're going to get some kind of shot. And he might be able to knock that three out of there as well at the same time. And here it goes. Well, he didn't get into him there, but that worked out just fine. Three ball should go off the 15 in here. And everything else is open. And it's, it's talk about so often is that trouble balls need to be dealt with first. Last thing you want to do against a player, a master's player, is to leave yourself, you know, get down to the last ball or the eight ball and not go all the way out because nine out of ten times at least it's curtains when you're playing players of this caliber. So he has dealt with the problems. I can shoot the combo here and from there. I don't think he should have. Unless there are any unforced errors, he's got a great opportunity. The one ball looks like he's going to leave for last. It's the one. Again, clean up the right side of the table first, then go up and clean the other side up. Eight ball is... It goes in five pockets, so it's got a lot of room to work with there. And this is Josh Heater at the table. He's a member of the Whiteouts. The reigning Masters champions. Still looking to get on the board. Tie this match up at one game apiece. I don't believe I have ever seen Josh play before, but he's very, very methodical, a thinker, making sure he's not making any unforced errors here coming up. He's taking his time. Reminds me of like playing Karen Core, you know? She would look at it and think and, and then run out. Hmm. I hated that about her, <laughs> the, the last part. <laughs> yeah. The thinking's fine. Yeah, go ahead and take all you want, but stop making everything. Second right. game of the eight ball rack here. Five games of eight ball before we switch to nine ball and masters. Uh, he must be looking at the angle to get on the six. I'm surprised if he is going to play the six ball in the side here to force the cue ball all the way down to the one. 
Looks like he got a good angle to do it. Not too many people are keen on kind of slamming this in, putting some center on it to go back here. I don't think he can follow it straight but with a 10 and the 13 there. I thought he was going to just hit and go straight up and shoot the 6 in the opposite corner and go up. Here it goes. Nice shot. Pockets the six in the side. He had the perfect angle. I thought he had to really slam it to get up there, but that was nice. Still some thinking to do here, though, making sure that he doesn't go into something that gets him snookered or gets stuck, only being able to make that eight in the side. Yeah, there's plenty of uh, uh, females that play on Masters teams and that belong there. And one of our ma really, really good Master players here play one in uh, Mini Mania also. She was here to play a Masters. Phenomenal shooter. We do have where well you can play six and under. It's called the regular APA eight ball and <laughs> nine ball team. Can also be if a four choose, and under if you choose so. All right, let's see what he's going to do here. This be where he's going to play. Oh, that's you know what? Look how what a touch he has. Again, we we're talking about how first two players really struggle with the speed of the table and never really got used to it, but. The little touches that Josh has, this fits his game perfectly. I know he could adjust to a slower table as well, but he uh, has done a good job of, job of maneuvering around this table so far. Josh nice. Heater picks up his first game. We are now tied at one game apiece. A race to seven. I have the third rack of the eight ball set coming up here momentarily. Josh will have the break. Lots of great vendors here in Las Vegas. Still time if you're here at the Westgate to pick up the Perfect new cue or whatever billiard accessory you might need. Maybe a, some early Christmas shopping. Check it off the list. <laughs> I think three or three of five of our players, I could, they spent, you know, half their money that they were going to have when they got out here seeing all the great stuff that they have. Yeah. The vendors. And there's your payout. 1.3, 1.2, almost 1.3 million. I liked what the guys that won the uh, eight ball world championship said the other night. They said they're going to spend all 30,000 <laughs> before they leave here. They're going to make sure of it. So I'd love an update to know if that's happened or yeah. not. But I can see one of the guys going, um, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> somebody's somebody's <laughs> wife texted him afterwards, don't you <laughs> dare. Yeah. Don't you dare. All right, Josh Heater now with the break. There's a powerful break there. Four ball goes, two ball goes in as well. So solids it is. Six ball is not in a fun spot. Seven ball either. It is makeable though, but then you've got the 310 right here, so. I'm not sure if he can make the six off the nine here to start it off.
Master's division is a great, you know, if you're a, if you're a six and you aspire to get better, um, or if you're five for that matter, every league area has a, has their own bylaws as far as if you're, if you're a four, are you allowed to be on a master's team, that type of thing. Usually the master's players appreciate playing better players, but every area is different and some of the smaller areas to have a division is very difficult to find a whole slew of sixes and sevens. Um, but if you're a five, you're a six, and you really would like to improve, playing against the Masters players is one really good way yeah. to get there. If you're paying attention, learning a lot. He went for the bank there. Chance for Mr. Benavides to return to the table now. Haven't seen him since that last rack when he missed the bank on the one ball. Didn't leave too many options. For Derek here, he's going to go for this 12 ball all the way down. Drift down, he should catch a shot at something here. If he makes that, he overcut it. Jumped up just a little bit as he was coming through. He might have rushed it a hair, which usually results in your body going, eh, and jumping up because mm. you know it's coming. So. Back in action again here for Josh. And shoot the seven ball in the corner is open. He's going to take his time here to try to figure out what to do with that 310 as soon as possible. That is his key issue. Besides getting, obviously, position on the other ones, but the fact that the three has no pocket for right now. If he can get an angle on this five ball, either now or later, he should be able to break it open with that. If you are just scrolling through your Facebook feed and finding us here in Pool Dog Arena, you're watching coverage of the APA Masters Championship, all part of the APA World Championships that have been going on here at the Westgate for the past week. This is Josh Heater at the table for the team of the Whiteout. They are out of Charlotte, North Carolina. They are the defending champions in this event. And they currently lead overall 1-0 in this race to two. That would be team points. They're tied 1-1 in the second match, which is a race to seven. Josh is looking at once the six and one are gone, then obviously the three ball would be makeable. He's trying to check and see if he likes that option better than trying to break up the six, uh, ten, three. It's kind of a preference thing here. I like uh, giving myself a nice angle, making this one ball and getting on the five to where I can break them up that way. Or getting the angle on the six, if he just rolls it up, you can go two rails. Well, he got two straight, and he still might be able to come down this way and break them up this way, but that's, since he got so straight on the five. I 
Needless to say, it's imperative, being that this problem ball is left so late in the rack. He needs to. He needs to break these open now. No, he's going to try to shoot. No, he's going to try to make things happen with a five here. Hmm. Going for the two rail breakup now. might have the angle to do what he originally was looking at and playing the three ball down in the far corner that's what he's doing I don't like it and that's like oh wait a minute I think he just <laughs> judging from the way he was looking went oh wait does it go there That's tough for us to tell from up here. We'll see his. He's looking to play it off the 13. Wow. That would be some shot. Yeah. All right. It's it's been a little bit, but Derek's back to the table. Again, first uh, first place ten thousand. Second is five five. I would say probably. What would you say? Do you know fifty fifty or probably more play that? Masters teams that have gone through qualifying tournament versus division play, considering how many of the smaller leagues that we have around the country. Yeah, I'm guessing more qualifying tournaments than league play, just because. Right. Like you said earlier, there's only so many leagues that are large enough to sustain a a Masters mm -hmm. league, exactly. right? When it's your very top tier players, unless they do what you said earlier and they allow you know fives and sixes and. Right. You know, maybe some of the players that aren't quite top tier, if you will. But I think probably, you know, teams get together playing the tournament locally to qualify to come yeah. out more yeah. often than not. I think it was, this has been about five or six years ago now, but I talked to a team that said that they didn't even have a qualifying tournament because they were the only ones that, you know, were high enough to go. So they just put a team together and asked the league operators, "Is it okay if we if we go?" And mm -hmm. they put it out there, and they nobody else wanted to battle them for it. So, well, he got to the three ball. I don't know how much reward there was there, but tied up the eight ball for sure. But the, I mean, the run out is is here now. If they obviously he's got the possibly the nine ball to work with there to break them open. And I think he's going to continue to move the balls where he wants them and play defense. He's made it tough, on, it tough yeah. on himself there, though, when he does get a shot. He just smiled. He's going, oh, man, darn it. <laughs> I got to stop tying things up. He didn't mean for that to hit the point and come back there and land just so. It 
a tough hit to do anything with. I mean, obviously, it's all the way down this way and come back up. But chances are, well, chances of leaving some kind of defense here is going to be Im near impossible. So he may go ahead and leave it so that, you know, Derek has to work on it a little bit. You know what I mean? Because if you, yeah, make the run out tougher, he's not going to gain anything by hitting that three ball. That's why he's doing what he's doing. He tried to tie those two off. Didn't quite get there, but... It's ball in hand to Derek. Yep. You know, it's interesting, too, because Josh is a much slower player than, than uh, Jeff Abernathy. Takes his time, so you can feel like the whole room has kind of slowed down a little bit. I think I see a guy over there sleeping. Audience. All right, Derek is still faced with that 3-8. We'll see what he's got, his plans are for dealing with that issue without leaving it for the very end. The eight ball is not makeable in the corner pocket, so he definitely has to break them up. Another safety there for yeah. Mr. Benavides. Try to entice Josh to at some point kick and hit that three ball, but I don't know that he will. I think he was confirming with the ref that there's no three foul. Yeah. Here. Just to be darn sure. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to knock that nine ball out of there, it looks like. That was the one ball that he had that was a good way to break them open. And he tied up and made it a little bit more difficult with the nine and the 15 there. I don't know. I think I would have to go here. Shoot this easy combination, put myself in an angle where I just draw into the three, eight. But that might be because I've, you know, why I've always been better at eight ball, I mean, nine ball than eight ball. I don't <laughs> have the patience for eight ball. I go, okay, I got to go now. Plays safe again. Not but a very good one. He meant to freeze behind that 11 there, Jason. You can see any time they're shaking the cue afterwards. Not what they wanted. All right, and another intentional foul. 
trying to knock all the balls that are close to the 3-9, I mean 3-8, out of there to make it tougher to break those open. I do like this choice, though, to get that one out of there. Put it somewhere where you can't tie anything else up easily. Or is this to... Or is he going to go? Is he going to go? Was a shot there of team horsemen and uh, horseshoes and hand grenades watching on the other side. I think Jeff Abernathy has been deserted by everybody else. He's the one <laughs> <laughs> alone. They went to grab some lunch. Yeah, well, I think it's just like in any other league this is the time that it, you know that one of the two of them are going to be put up so let's go have uh, go to the bathroom yeah you know take a uh, break maybe they quick. found a practice table who knows i don't know yeah. if they're don't know oh <laughs> wow <laughs> what, what well was that? done <laughs> was that a fly yes okay he it's just like, it's like karate kid with he the chopsticks just killed the fly okay <laughs> that livens up the uh crowd here at pool dog that was arena. impressive Except now his hand hurts. Lightning quick. Uh, that was hands quick. of Mr. Holy Benavides. Smokes. They've been karate bothered chops by that. a fly right out yeah, of the. Yeah, that of the thing air. has been bothering everybody <laughs> since they started this match. I think it was here yesterday too in this room. Actually, impressive. <laughs> that breathes a little life into the audience here. It's mm. Been very subdued for the last several minutes now. And this third rack of the eight ball set. Oh. Is there another one? No, didn't get that one. Oh, you got that too? <laughs> another one. <laughs> I'm starting to think this is a pre shot ritual for Mr. Benavides. Two flies in one. What was that Disney show? Oh, look at that camera work. Look at that camera work. Fantastic. Pretty good. Fantastic camera work. On that <laughs> one. Catching the fly being smashed. Meanwhile, there's a pool match going on still. The Masters Championship. No flies allowed. Josh Heater back at the table. With his three balls still. Paired up with that eight ball near the side pocket. He has done everything but hit that ball. Yep. And the he last will several not. innings. He will not. And I'm a little bit surprised at Derek for not, uh, with ball on hand a couple of times, not trying to break it up sooner because the less balls he has to work with, the easier it is for Josh to just knock them to another part of the table where it makes that. And this can go on. Forever, there you go. Now he's only got one ball left to deal with this. And pretty soon he'll be in the same position, potentially, as Josh is. So, but you got to see. Who will look flinch too. first here? Is there no way that, uh, wouldn't it be funny if that eight was dead into the corner? Off the three? No, it's not. I don't. I would mean funny, but if they would have missed that all along, <laughs> but that wasn't the case. All right, I like putting it right here, one just above, and this way is where I would go. He's going straight in. Straight on it, and mm. no love from the three <laughs> ball, and we're going to continue this.
risky little shot. Easy for it to pop out there. Did he hit a rail? Nice shot. Nicely done. Nice shot. Now it'll be Mr. Heater's turn to respond. It's been a real cat and mouse here for this game. In case you guys to join us, we're still at one to one in the second match. Overall scores you can see is white out one nothing. The three ball is not frozen to the rail. The eight is, it looks like, but not the three ball. So he could just tap this here. See if he can get a defensive shot out of it. He didn't mm. hit it firm enough. Golden opportunity now for Derek Benavides so to take all a 2-1 lead. All that patience, and Derek looks like, well, he at least has a shot at it here. His first open one in a while that he's taken anyway. And that rack is in the history books, Jason. Woo! <laughs> that Might was be a master's record for length of uh, point. That one took a while. Now a 2-1 lead for Derek Benavides. He will have the break in the fourth rack of the eight ball set if you've not found APA on social media yet whether it's Twitter Facebook Instagram YouTube TikTok we're out there find us if you love pool you're gonna like the content that we put out there Referee prepares the rack. Again, we've got the horseshoes and hand grenades out of Philadelphia. And the whiteout, Charlotte, North Carolina. Whiteout already with one important match point. They need one more to win their second consecutive Masters Championship. Break did not produce much, not a ball on the break, and kind of a cluster-filled <laughs> table again. Yes, it is. I was going to take a look. It doesn't look like it's going to go, but close. I'm going to do this early check here. Open table for Josh to decide what he wants to go with this. He's gonna go ahead with the uh, with the s okay with the stripes. I thought he was gonna go solid here. Hmm. He must be convinced that goes. Pockets that ball in the corner. Another in the side pocket. A little tap here. Just to float the cue ball out for the 11. And again, he's already checked and he's convinced that nine ball does go past the two. The eight ball, once he's done clearing all this up, should only have one pocket it doesn't go, so that's not going to be an issue of concern. Twelve in the corner. Let's we'll see now if he goes after this. At nine ball, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Oh, the eleven does go on the side, so he can play for that if he wants. 
Let's come back there. Nice shot there. Nice smooth drawing up back for the nine. Position nine eight. You've got to be a little bit cautious considering the fact that the eight does not go in either one of these pockets right here. And because of that, if you get stuck on that three the three ball down there, obviously that would not be a good thing. So it's gonna come back. All right, it's do or die time. Does it go? Does it not go? He must be convinced. Oh, yeah. No problem. Oh, what a beautiful run out this was. A little different tempo than last rack, huh, Jason? Yep, Josh beautiful. moving with a little more urgency there. And nice, nicely played, nicely planned out. Another nice shot of Pool Dog Arena here. Great job by our crew setting up this fantastic space. We're going to have a quick break by the players, it looks like. So while they take a quick break, we're going to hear a word from our friends at PoolDog.com. Every loss is a, a very valuable lesson that I have taken and um, utilized from my mistakes to make a better person and a better player of myself and others. I want to make a shout out to Leo, Jose. Without these guys, man, we, we all did it as a team, you know. Jose, holy smokes, it's I feel bad to get for loud him. In here, folks. It's I about think to get so. Loud. Another opportunity for Jose Salas to finish this match off for the World Championship. And there it is. There you go, folks. The Fantastic. Scorpions, Joliet, Illinois. They are the 2020-2021 APA World 8-Ball Champions. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, first of all, <laughs> I want to say thank you, God. Thanks, God. Thank you, thank APA. You so and thank, thanks to all my friends, my family, mis amigos, mi familia. And we our were friends. on a mission together as a team, and we became a family. Be consistent, practice, and always, always listen to the master players, the better shooters. They will guide you and they will lead you. My husband has led me and I have led him and taught him things. Also I wanna say right now, cause my kids are watching, Junior Daniel, we did it baby. Number one baby, long shots, we did it. Daniel, look at daddy's trophy. <laughs>
All right, welcome back to Pool Dog Championship Arena for continuing coverage of the APA Masters Championship. Players have returned to the arena. We are tied two games apiece in this race to seven, featuring horseshoe and hand grenades and the defending champions, the Whiteout. This is Josh Heater of the Whiteout at the table with the break, looking to take his first lead of the match. This will be the final game of the eight ball set. And then we'll move to nine ball. And just like that, Mr. Heater takes a 3-2 lead with an eight on the break. Not sure that the crowd even fully <laughs> comprehended what happened there. Pull some balls off the table here after that very quick rack. Move into the nine ball set. Once again, Mr. Heater will have the break. My broadcast partner, the Striking Viking, will join me here again momentarily as she just missed the quickest rack ever in the Masters Championship <laughs> with an eight on the eight on the break. Did I really miss it? It was an eight on the break. I think the crowd kind of missed it too. There was no reaction. Oh, that's funny. Mr. Heater just kind of ho-hummed it. Didn't <laughs> think much of it, but he does take a 3-2 lead. And and the very valuable first break on the nine as well. Again, Dang it, I missed it. They do lead by a point. So if White out, if Josh Heater can get to seven before Mr. Benavides, this match would be over. Still a long way to go though. Thank you. Sol Solid break there, but nothing happened. And there's no bank available either with a seven ball being right here. So I think it's going to go to a safety play. Bring the cue ball. Would love to freeze it behind this three. Just bring it back. Play the one ball down this way. Cue ball down right here. He's got the eight and the three, the two and the seven to hide behind. So. Oh, he did not hit it anywhere near firm enough. He got the snooker out of it, but a pretty easy kick shot, I believe. I don't think he can, I'm not sure he can make it from there. He's looking at the billiard. Because he can't really, I don't know if he can make the shot, so he's looking that he would love to hit it this way, down here, possibly making that with the billiard on the nine. I don't know if he can get deep enough for it. If you can hit it softly, you can lengthen it with some left spin, but we'll see if he can get there. Nice shot. Is he going to get a shot on the one? Not really. But half the battle is staying at the table, so you're in control at least. Well, he's looking to see if he wants to ch chance it and cut this in. That means the cue ball's flying a bit. You can see how severe that angle is. No, he's decided to play defense. That makes a lot more sense. Nice shot behind the nine. 
Well done, tied up to four, six. He didn't really want to do that, but it's not really tied up. It is dead in the corner, so he's hoping he's going to get a shot here with ball in hand, preferably. That was nice speed getting behind the nine ball right there. Sweet. Arlene wants me to explain the word, term billiard. Billiard is, is when you're making a, a ball out of turn. In other words, you're, instead of hitting the one ball, let's say, into the nine winning the game, you hit the cue ball into the one, and then the cue ball makes the object ball that you're shooting at in the nine, preferably. So instead of the uh, combo, it's a billiard. All right, looks like this is going to pay off here, except he got on the wrong side of this two ball. <laughs> he wanted to get on the other side of the two or straight in where he could draw back for this 4-6 combo. And now he's got the opposite angle than he wanted. You can see that is straight in if he could get on this side of the table, but he, he wanted to land on this side anywhere there to be able to get to this spot right here. So just a little more work with the cue ball. <coughs> Again, he might want to play billiard on the 2-7 here if he can. We'll see what he's going to do. Is he going to go around? Up and down? Too much? Little too much left there. See what he's gonna do here. He's obviously try to gonna try to play a snooker behind the eight if he can. A lot of left spin, digging in, going around two rails. Wants to freeze up right behind that eight. Excuse me. Nice. Can somebody give him some loving on that shot on the speed, the angle? That was a really good shot, Josh. Right. Not too many options here for Derek. He can't go. He would love to go two rails here, but I don't know that he can. Well, he's curving it a little bit. Yep, again, two rails. How's the speed? Well, that could have turned out worse. That was a good shot, Derek. Another turn at the table for Josh Heater. Looking to extend his lead. You know, it's funny. This crowd couldn't wait to uh, to applaud and show their appreciation for shots. But I think that one rack that they had put everybody a little Slowed bit to sleep. Slowed it down. <laughs> yeah. Slowed it down. <laughs> so much so that they missed the eight, on, eight, the eight break. on the break. <laughs> well, it's the game, especially the game of eight ball can really take some time. 10,000 dollars on the line here in Pool Dog Arena. Thin cut here. Not easy getting on the six from there either. Look out. Took advantage of the uh, old pocket there to make that. Just got a little bit too far. A 
I bet you there's a few people in the crowd here too, Jason, that are sitting here, especially that were sitting in that one rack going, man, I lost with these guys. Wait a minute. <laughs> just that moment. I mean, mm -hmm. they've been playing a great match. It's not like that was a bad rack. It was just the balls were laying the where layout, they were. Yeah. And, you know, it's all about patience from there. It's not like you're playing bad. It's just you're not going to sh don't shoot the shot if it's not there. All right, let's see if you can slice this down the rail. Nice. Beautifully done. There's some loving appreciation from the crowd there for Josh slicing that ball down, and then he just sold, solved the whole thing here. Just come out a little bit. If you can get right about here, make the eight, come down this way for the nine. Pockets that eight in the corner. And that's Looks like he'll take perfect. a two-game lead here if he can pocket this nine. No problem there well for done. Josh. Finished it up. Now up 4-2 in this race to seven, three games away from a second consecutive title for the whiteout of Charlotte, North Carolina. And he will have the break once again. Ava and I grabbing some much needed sustenance halfway through this Masters match. It's okay. Shout out to APA President Greg Fletcher. All the things that he has going on here in Vegas was kind enough to bring us a quick bite to keep us fueled up as we are midway through this Masters championship. Second rack of the nine ball set. Powerful break there. Narrowly scratched in the side. Pocketed the six. Not happy with the layout he got though. Only one spot to get on this two and the one ball being where it is. He can't hold it. I mean, it's a chance to slice this one ball in, but I don't think he can hold it going up and down for the two, so. We'll see what he comes up with here. Give this a little bit of a thought. The fact that all the balls pretty much are on the other side of the table doesn't make it easy to play safe on this one ball either. You don't want to take the chance of getting snookered on the two because then you could give up that rack. All right, nice cue ball control, bringing it down. Still left a window, but it's a long way to go there. Under the circumstances, not a bad shot. Derek not in as, as good of a position to come up with a good defensive shot here. So we'll see what he's going to come up with. He could you know, overcut it. 
Oh, I don't like that. Well, not too bad. Nice speed. Nice speed. In case you guys just joined us, as you can see there, Whiteout is ahead one nothing. So if Josh were to win this race to seven, that would be the end of it. He's three games away from the Whiteout defending their title. They won it last year as well. Strong team. Horseshoes and Grand Grenade's been playing great all tournament. They've had some chances here. And I'm sure they're going to get more in this match and hopefully for them one the one after this. Both these teams came in undefeated. Mm-hmm. I saw that, yeah. The Masters Championship, like all of our events here in Vegas, modified single elimination, which means you have the you're guaranteed the opportunity to play at least twice, not always the opportunity to lose twice. Depends when on the bracket you lose. Not a problem for either one of these teams, though. No. They just kept on winning. See a jump shot here from Derek. <coughs> Yeah, that means you got to kind of jump long and pop down there just in time. Get over the edge of the nine and the edge of the two. Jump cues are allowed here in the Masters Championship. Well, did a good job. No foul there, but... Didn't get a ton for it. I'm sure he was hoping to not make anything, at least get the snooker out of it. The only redeeming thing here, I think Josh is not able to make that one. He's looking at it, as you can see there. Got an easy defensive shot if he so chooses. Do you know the history of the but jump cue? Out of curiosity, <laughs> I do not. I'm wondering, I was like, when there for at what the point the did the jump cue. cue come into play? It couldn't have been that. I think one of the very first people, and I'm sure there were some that were playing around with it before, just like it is with everything else. But one of the piece people really credited credited for for bringing the idea of the jump cue, and who was one of the first players to be really really good at it was uh jumping Sammy Jones. Jumping Sammy Jones. Yes. Okay. Yes, and I remember I was on the bored and we had real arguments and discussions some players against because they didn't want to take away the beauty of kicking at balls and some people said no it's it's exciting blah 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 some people were already jumping with their with their shaft and i think that's how sammy started before they start making it and i remember i made the case that we really need to think about this because once we say yes we can't say no after that because no the manufacturers back. are going to start making yeah. cues and it'll be It'll be out there on the pro tour. So that was an '80s kind of thing, or I wasn't around in the eight. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. it was either late '80s or early '90s. 80s. Okay. I was on the board. Oh, that's of the w not as far back as I might have thought. So yeah, I like always imagined it was somebody. You know, we all played in somebody's like home table that didn't have quite enough room on right. one side, and so you played with the little, the little short cue. Yeah, so I thought maybe yeah. somebody at some point just thought, hey, yeah. maybe I can do this. <laughs> with this thing, so. Yeah, somebody just kind of went, wait a minute. There were a lot of people, you know, jumping with the shaft before that, but to actually make it into a jump cue, an actual thing. Shoot, I've been around so long that I remember when the, when the break cue came about. Nobody had break cues back when, when I first were playing on tour. They were just smashing up their You their just use your regular cue, yeah. <laughs> The evolutions of the game. Mm. Don't even get us started on the glove. Oh, yeah. And then there was, I was there when we went to what we refer to now, you know, Texas Express rules where you actually take ball in hand anywhere on the table. It used to be always behind the line. You could push out after every shot. If your opponent got lucky and snookered you, you had a chance to push out and... All right, let that go a little bit. Oh, 
Derek really needs to create something here before this match completely gets out of hand. Nice shot there. Is he going to uh, get something makeable on the five? Again, very much in this match, obviously. Race to seven. Either one of these players could explode if the table cooperates and run out. You may never get to the table again, so... Now that was, that surprised me. I thought for sure he would make that one. Josh coming over to get a look at it before he grabs his cue stick. Yes, Larry, the frog was one of the first. I had a long frog and the short frog. Long frog, <laughs> short frog, huh? <coughs> for the long jumps and the short jumps. And that was before the phenolic tip and all that stuff, too, so. Sounds like you are more of the traditionalist on the traditionalist side. Very of the much so. I don't do the glove. No glove. I don't do the no carbon fiber shaft. No, 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 no. Maple shaft. I don't do the fancy schmancy, you know, the chalk. I like my master's chalk. I want it to be right there on the table for me. So old school. Hello, Matt Bryson, hey, one Matt. of our regular viewers tuning in down in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Hope you're having a good day. Let's see if he's going to hit straight on here. Or is he going? Oh, he tried to cut it in. Big break for Derek there. He got a shot this time. It's go time, Derek. It's must make now. He's going to have a chance to keep his team alive here and go into the fifth match. Need to hurry up and make something happen here fairly soon. Just the nine ball remains here. No problems there for Derek Benavites. Pulls within one game. This race to seven, he will have the break. I know it says John Benavides there. He goes by Derek. Again, $10,000 goes to our champion here this afternoon, 5000 of the runner-up. We had two teams that tied for third place earlier today, each of them taking home $3,000, and you can get a look there at how the rest of the payouts work in the Masters Championship. All part of the nearly $1.3 million up for grabs at the APA World Championships. So if you're tuning in wondering how you get to Pool Dog Arena, how you get a piece of that prize money, it all starts with joining an APA team. Fall session right around the corner. Perfect time to get involved if you're not already. Great way to meet some new people. Maybe fall in love. Who knows? Lots of great stories of couples meeting through APA. Just a good way to have a good time this fall. So make sure you go to poolplayers.com. Join today if you haven't already. Maybe we'll see you out here next August at the World Championships. Rack is prepared.
Derek's going to ask for a slight adjustment from the referee, something he didn't like what he sees or didn't like what he saw there. <clears throat> Rerack is complete. Derek's got the cue ball where he wants it for the break. Look at that nine ball. Oh, it was moving. Wow, nothing on the break. It's a lot of times that's a kiss of death there, in, especially in Masters. Not making anything on the break, but with this layout that it turned out to be, ta the table is not cooperating. The table layout, I should say, is not cooper very cooperating very well. He's got an if you want, easy defensive shot here, just kind of drifting the cue ball down in this area. That would leave a jump shot at best. No, not mm. quite. Derek already back at the table. One in the corner. I know somebody was asking that if you have a team like this in your area, how do you have enough teams that want to play in a division knowing that chances are they're going to win? Um, <clears throat> I think most people, unless you are that team or close to it, to where you're one of those teams, then most people play Masters to, to have that opportunity to play and to improve. You know what I mean? And it's not about necessarily this year, but... I, if I do this, maybe in two or three years, I can improve enough to be able to play, you know, and be on that one team that has a chase chance to make it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our players want to play. Them. Our fives and sixes really want to play in Masters to learn, to advance their games over, over time. And Can't just you know to a lot of people. It's not just about winning that spot to Vegas. All right, let's see, Josh, what he can do here again. Ten thousand up for grabs here for first, five for second. Some pretty spiffy trophies for both yeah. here. Yeah. Is it going to get up there? Yeah. Still got to deal with that four ball. I don't think that goes past the six. He doesn't look too concerned, so maybe it's just an optical illusion from where we're sitting here, but it sure doesn't look like it goes. Mm. <coughs> no. He might have been trying to break them up there since he overcut it a little bit. It also changed the direction of the cue ball, so... Derek's forced to kick at this. I don't think he can from there, though, can he? I think he's asking himself the same question. Mm -hmm. He's answered the question. Now can he execute? 
I have to put a lot of spin on this. Nice. That worked out, I think, better even than he hoped since he missed it. Well, it seems like all of these racks in the second match have just been grinding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This has not been open, kind of shootout type racks. Grind away strategy kind of racks. Right. All right. Bank shot here. Oh, he wanted to hit those real bad. For a couple of reasons, as you can see, not only did he not break the balls open, but got snookered behind the eight. I think we're going to see the jump cue get out here. <coughs> jump cue it is. Tough shot there, when every time you're jacked up like that, frozen on a ball, that's not easy. Way tougher for those who, who don't play pool, where they go, how did you miss that? And it's, um, that's a tough shot. Four in the corner for Josh Heater. And this is definitely Josh's table should he accept the mission. <laughs> <laughs> should he execute properly? Yeah, it's laying pretty sweet right now. He came up ahead there again. A little bit of spin here, bring it back up. He wants to get straight. Perfect. Seven in the side. Looks well on his way to running out this rack, extending his lead. Eight in the corner. With that nine ball, he takes a 5-3 lead. Now two games away from victory, not just for himself, but his team. Looks like we're going to take another quick break on the floor, so we're going to hear a word from our friends at PoolDog.com.
are here with Veronica Spiro, Joe Colt, Jonathan Pavelski. How are you feeling? Totally unbelievable. I had no idea I'd do this. Amazing. No, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. Overwhelmed. <laughs> Mind blowing. I mean, I'm shaking. This is amazing and exciting. Jeremy Jones, Team USA Moscone captain. What a way to start off this year's US Amateur Championship. We've got Rachel Lang. Rachel is undefeated from Catskill, New York, taking on Stacey Bourbeau, a former US Amateur champion. Down to just the eight ball here. There we go. Fires it in. Yeah. There you have it, folks. Hello, I'm Stacey Bourbeau, and I am the 2022 US Women's Amateur Champion. Final match in this great event. We got an all Texas final, which I know suits you, Mr. Yeah, I'm Lone. pretty happy. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lone so. Star. Uh, we've got Ernesto Bayawa, the 2011 U.S. Amateur Champion. He's going to be competing against Jacob Watson. Oh, sweet shot. Got it. There you go, folks. Wow. Jacob Watson about to come of age before our very eyes here at Stroke. Players are ready here at Pool Dog Arena. After a brief break. Josh Heater leading 5-3 in this race to seven. Two games away from victory for his team, the Whiteouts. His opponent, Derek Benavides, seated. Not to let that happen. Another strong break, but another dry break. Strong break again, dry break again, and not much to shoot at for Derek. Making this shot here. He's being right-handed. Unless he's good opposite-handed, I don't know. Yeah, he's going to play safe. You practice the well. I mean, not now, but when you played a lot, did you practice opposite-handed? I often? really didn't. The opposite-handed, the one-handed, all that stuff. I never really did because I um, I had my daughters so young that I didn't have a lot of time, a lot of years to kind of goof around mm. playing pool. I was hardcore serious practice when I when I did have time. Yeah. So no, that's not one of my. Was it part of your repertoire? repertoire? Nah. Jinx, so buy me a Coke. <laughs> How often do you jinx on the word repertoire? Uh, not very often. <laughs> <laughs> that's maybe the first time in Jinx history. I know, that's pretty good. <coughs> <laughs> that was funny. Um, all right, so somebody was asking before who is on the team's horseshoes and hand grenades. There is Sean O'Neill. Jerry Dunn, who played the first match, Joe Hong, and Derek John Benavides on this that is in this match, and then on Whiteout, Joey Fox, Brian, David White, that's Brian White, David White, and Jeff Abernathy, and Josh Heater. Those are your players. Another jump shot here in this match. Again, pretty easy opportunity. One, two, obviously, three ball. 
has to be planned for. This is uh, funny how these racks sometimes... The last match, the balls broke up way better than they have in this match between these two players. So, what to do here with the four? Is he going for a billiard? Yeah, he is. He's looking at the four, nine billiard, going, getting past that eight. I guess the nine ball goes clearly <coughs> past it. So here's, I don't remember who it was that asked what it, to explain the billiard, but here's an opportunity to see one. Cue ball going into the four. Then caroming off the four into the nine, trying to make that nine past the eight ball there. Nice, nice shot. Not even a full pocket there, so hit that with some confidence. And with and that, hmm. Josh Heater now on the hill, one game away from victory. For him and his teammates on the whiteout. His teammates who have made their way out of the arena, it looks like, at the moment. <laughs> They're <laughs> liable to miss it. <laughs> I, do see, I do see one teammate <laughs> returning. <laughs> Perhaps they've been tuning into the live stream and are just waiting for the moment to yeah, rush here in. Yeah, here comes the other one. They're <coughs> going, okay. Reminds me of the Moscone Cup when I was in London in 18 and Team USA won and Sky Woodward and Billy oh. Thorpe were in the back <laughs> practicing because Shane was in a match and things were a little questionable and then he finally won the match and they came flying in from outside <laughs> the arena and jumped the rails and onto the table. Pretty cool moment there. Yeah. Let's see if we get there again soon, someday. Moscone Cup back in the U.S. this year. Yeah. I'll be there at least all for right. a couple of days. You going to the Moscone Cup at all? Not, no, not, no, this, not year. this year. No plans anyway right now. Vegas no. in December is not your cup of tea, huh? I like Vegas in April, May, and I like Vegas in August. That's about yeah. you know, all like Vegas yeah. I can handle. It does get a little chilly out here in the wintertime. You know, yeah. I tell you what, the best time out here, though, was last year when we moved the dates around October last year. Beautiful out here. Yeah. I mean, just gorgeous. Yeah, it was great. Now, I've been out to one. I went to... Gorgeous. I was meant to go to one in the UK, but that was... Uh, it didn't work out. And then we went to one here when they had all of us... Um, the oh, all of yeah, famers. the 50th anniversary of the Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. yeah. So we were all out there. I Even was there Lucas for that. was yeah. out here. 17, 2017. Ray Martin, yeah. No, Ray Martin is the only one that... Oh, the living... Or was it Dallas West that didn't come? I don't know, the there other. was a bunch of no, you there. I, yeah. I think, no, Dallas did come, I think, and not Ray. But anyway, it was... Special night. Great to have everybody yeah. there. That was over at what, Mandalay Bay, right? That year, 17? Yeah. yeah. I think they're at Bally's this year, so I'm sure tickets have long since sold out. So if you didn't jump on board with that, maybe Stub Hub can help you later on. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be there for at least a couple I'll days. I'll call Emily and see the beggar go, on yeah. my knees. Josh going to take a look at this rack. Of course, he pocketed an eight on the break earlier. If he can get the nine on the snap, this match would be over. I couldn't. Brings According a powerful to Josh, break. She yeah. couldn't get at a <coughs> more appropriate time, but let's see. Derek is sending the voodoo eyes over here, going, "Don't you dare!" See if he can get that nine ball moving. Oof! Got powerful it moving break. towards the pocket, but not enough. Well, this could be all she wrote here. This one ball being the key shot in this rack. The most difficult thing he should have in this rack is just slicing that down. The cue ball is going to come across and back out again if he makes the two. So, And then it's uh, sweetness from there.
Nice shot. I don't think he could place it any better with ball in hand, so now just getting anywhere. Decide which path he wants to take from the three to the four. And even though the nine ball is hanging right by the corner pocket there, the five ball does pass by it, so there's nothing messing up his plans right now for winning the second match, taking the championship. Some folks asking if we've had Masters teams repeat as champions. I believe uh, the answer is yes. Yes, I think so. It was so. not that yeah. long ago either. It was a um, team out of Massachusetts, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, I think so. The name escapes me at the moment, but somebody will weigh in with that team name. Hugh and the Hustlers. There we go. Didn't take long. <laughs> Thank you for that information. And I think there was maybe even a team Didn't prior to that Brian, back in the day. Wasn't Brian Parks on a on a back to back team? For Masters, I don't know. I mean No. Yeah. I feel like a team named the Three Amigos maybe at some point were I feel like they were South California. All right. As we're Talking about the past, Josh is in the middle of making future plans here mm -hmm. on the five. Just come out center table for the six. I think he can do almost whatever he wants with that seven, being that the nine is right by the pocket. As long as it goes in. Not much his opponent can do here, but no. sit back and watch and appreciate what's happening in front of him because... Josh Heater is three balls away from victory. I think it kind of sums it up. You know, Josh has taken advantage of every opportunity, has fought and is grinding and thinking and working things out. Um, Derek has played a great match. I would say that Josh has gotten a few more roles, but in Josh's defense he's taken care of almost every single one of them where Derek has come up a little bit short had a couple of mishaps and misses or misposition but uh, you got to give it to Josh he fought really hard and kept Derek seated as much as possible and guess what back to back baby that's what we heard Boom. from team whiteout Yes, ma'am. The whiteout of Charlotte, North Carolina. They are your champions for 2022. Second consecutive Masters Championship for them. Congratulations. Horseshoe and hand grenades will have to settle for a runner-up finish and a $5,000 payday. But certainly an impressive performance by them here as well. See if we can't get the players over to the pit area for a quick interview as they shake hands. <laughs> They're trying to get the teams out. <laughs> All right. So while we wait <laughs> to see if we can grab our newest champions, <laughs> Masters players, you never know. I know it. Well, right now, Abernathy is walking around just, uh, Looking you know. for his hat. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's fist bumping in, taking care of the crowd. Brian White's already got his hat back on. <laughs> what took him so long? <laughs> Joey Fox makes his way over. Jeff Abernathy is waiting on our that was newest <laughs> champ in... Josh Heater as he makes his way over. Right. Casey looks like she's ready. Go ahead, take it away. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, guys. It's Casey. I'm here at the APA World Pool Championships, winner of the Masters Wideout. How are you guys feeling right now? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good? Yes. Okay, yeah. So tell us about the roller coaster of emotions that you guys were feeling throughout this match, kind of the journey to here. So we won it last year, obviously, and we had to replace a teammate. So it took us a few matches to kind of jail a little bit. Um, we struggled early on. If you'd have told me two days ago that we were going to be right here, we would have never believed it for sure. So what were you guys kind of struggling with, just like getting your groove? Yeah, I mean, teams, team events are totally different. Oh, team events are totally different than individual events. It's a different kind of pressure, and 
um, it's just different all the way around. So sure. we're all used to playing individual events, obviously. Yeah, sure. So how long have you guys been playing together? I guess not that long. This year. Well, me and you a couple of those three a couple of years. Awesome. Josh, well, we as masters and high school level players, any big tips that you want to give to anyone watching at home? I mean, it just takes a lot of practice, and you have to stay in competition. That's the big thing. You have to, you have to compete, compete against other really good players. That's where, that's where the, uh, you know, sure. that's and, where yeah, the and improvement a lot of flies, comes from. Yeah. <laughs> Lord. Um, so any big plans for the $10,000 that you guys just won? No, we're going to eat a steak right now. I know oh, that, yeah. right? Yeah. That's right. Okay. Definitely All right. Steak. Celebratory steak. Awesome. Yeah. Any big shout-outs to anyone you guys want to give at home? I know last year that a lot of people were super supportive from the Carolinas on the uh, on the stream, and we really appreciated it. We we definitely appreciate all that. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Congratulations again. Back to you, Jason. Thank you. Well, thanks. thanks, guys. <laughs> all right. So a well-deserved steak dinner on tap for the the gentlemen from Charlotte, North Carolina, the defending champions, the Whiteout. Congratulations to them. They're taking home ten thousand dollars. First place prize money. Again, want to mention Horseshoe and Hand Grenades, our runners-up. Great tournament for them as well. Folks, that wraps up today's coverage here at the World Pool Championships. We will be back at 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Coverage of the Team Captains Championship. Make sure you come right back here and join us for that. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everybody.